Drive Ignition. This is Ektar's Reviews from Anime to Figures and Beyond. Hey, this is Ektar and welcome to Ektar's Figure Reviews. And today on Ektar's Figure Reviews, nope, your eyes are not deceiving you, we are going to be reviewing an exclusive figure, and that figure is Figma Saber Lily. She is an exclusive figure that actually was bundled together with the game Fate Unlimited Codes for the PlayStation 2 SP Box. Now the SP Box is only limited to 50,000 copies, and this game was released December 18th, 2008, which is last year. So I know I said previously in previous videos that I wasn't going to review uh, exclusives because I had to open the box and I wanted to keep them in the box. But after some contemplating, I realized that, you know, exclusives are figures too. And I'm going to open them up and share them with you guys. So let's take a look at the box. First of all, we have the PlayStation 2 SP box of the video game. Uh, at the front cover of the box, we see a gorgeous art of Saber Lily with the game title here, Fate Unlimited Codes. Uh, at the sides, we have artwork of uh, Saber Lily. At the top is a picture of uh, Figma Saber Lily. And at the bottom, nothing much, just some Japanese text, uh, company logos, and so on and so forth, warning labels. And at the back, we have a very, very nice window display featuring Saber Lily and a number of the accessories that is included with her. At the sides of the display, we have some pictures of Saber Lily. We have some screenshots of Saber Lily in the game. Uh, Figma SP004 and the design of the box is pretty much similar to the other exclusive Figma that came with the PS2 Haruhi game, uh, ha Figma Haruhi Brave version. So it's pretty nice to see that they are actually keeping in tradition with the PlayStation 2 exclusives and the box design is absolutely fantastic. Now of course if you don't know, Fate Unlimited Codes is actually a fighting game featuring the characters from the Fate Stay Night franchise. It is a fantastic game, I highly recommend it. But this isn't uh, Ektar's game reviews, maybe I'm going to do a game review for that uh, in the future. But we're going to stick with the Figma and let's open the box right now. You have to be really careful because this is an exclusive. And take a look at Figma Saber in her plastic packaging. And we have a background here with lilies, what else? And SP004's uh, Saber Lily and Figma over here. We have a nice purple lavender colour scheme. Pretty nice background. Set it off to the side and here is the Figma Saber Lily in her plastic packaging. And I know all of you can't wait to see how she is. So well, Let's open it up and we'll take a closer look at the figure inside. And here she is in all her glistening glory. Take a look at that. I'm going to let the figure speak for itself for a second. Just take a look at how detailed this figure is. And of course, uh, Saber Lily or the Lily variant of Saber actually only appears in the PS2 game as an alternate costume. And perhaps we'll get into that later when I actually review the game. Let me just quickly go through the articulation of the figure before taking a look at the accessories for the head. Uh, actually, the joints are pretty standard for most figmas, but I'm just going to go through the articulation anyway. So for the head, it's on a ball joint. She can turn up, down, left and right. Full range of motion there. For the arms, forwards, backwards, in and out, uh, side to side. It's on a ball joint. Full range of motion there as well. For her shoulder, it can move forwards and backwards. Uh, slightly left and right, not too much though. Uh, her arms is, her hand is on a ball joint so it can swivel left and right. Uh, it can't move forwards and backwards because of the design of the hand. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a joint there. Uh, other than that, we have her waist joint. You can move, turn left and right, uh, forwards and backwards. We have a second waist joint that is just below this waist joint. Uh, the skirts are actually on 
individual joints and can be posed individually. We have this side to side joint and we can move the skirts in and out so that it can so that we can pose her legs freely. And once again this is in line with the uh, rest of the Figma figures features where the clothes do not get in the way of the articulation whatsoever. And uh, just to notice we can see that Saber Lily's hair is tied in a ponytail instead of a little bun as normal Saber as normal Saber's hair is tied in. Her legs, we have the usual articulation, full range of motion there, forwards, backwards, left and right, although it's a bit hard to show you because of these skirt pieces. Uh, the knees move forwards and backwards, and unfortunately can't turn side to side, and of course the feet are on regular ball joints and can turn side to side this way, and side to side the other way as well, uh, forwards and backwards too of course. And uh, well, that's about it for articulation, and the articulation, as I've said, is uh, pretty standard, but seriously, this figure looks awesome. The joints are so concealed except for the shoulder joints but the, they themselves don't look too bad and they don't really destroy, destroy the overall aesthetic of the figure. It's really really dynamic and the details on this thing are outstanding. Just look at the armor. Now let's just take a look at the accessories the figure comes with and let me just put her off to the side. So first of all we have her basics. We have uh, in a separate layer of plastic casing and Wow, the accessories here, the basic accessories are even laid out very nicely and neatly in a separate layer of plastic packaging. Very impressive. We have a different set of hands, exchangeable hands. We have the Figma stand, the Figma base, and at the bottom, rolled up neatly, is the Figma plastic bag. She comes with an extra hair piece that has the hair flapping in the wind, and she comes with an extra face piece. Staring to the side nonchalantly, nonchalantly I should say. And uh, for the last accessory, let's just take a look at the figure for a second. We see at the back of the figure, we have a hole where the peg of the stand plugs in. And it somehow, to some people, will ruin the aesthetic of the figure, will ruin the overall image of the figure. And what they did this time is to actually include a little piece to plug into the hole to hide the hole. And this is something that is really, really, really well done. Because once the piece is placed in there, As you can see, the hole is covered and it looks much, much better. But now, you're, you're probably thinking to yourself, what if I want to pose the figure on the stand and I want to cover this up as well? Well, we have a problem there for the usual figmas, but in the case for Saber Lily, they did provide another option, and that is this. This is a clip that actually clips around the waist of the figure, and it's pretty reminiscent of the Reveltech stands. And this is actually a special add-on that's only included with the Saber Lily figure, and it actually just connects to the end of the regular stand, and packs around and clips around the waist. This is a fantastic option. Whatever it is, they have actually provided a solution. You want to pose the figure with you want to you want to have a figure that is aesthetically pleasing. There is a, there is a cover for the hole. You want to pose the figure on the stand, but still want it to be to look absolutely perfect from all angles. Here we, we go. A final accessory, which is of course the ornamental sword. Unfortunately, she doesn't come with the Excalibur or the Excalibur scabbard, but that's no problem because you can actually take the Excalibur and the Excalibur scabbard from the original saber to pose with the saber lily. And this is just the regular ornamental sword that is exactly the same as the one that came with the regular saber figma. So in conclusion, I really, really recommend this figure. Uh, it is one of the better Figma figures that have ever been produced, if not the best, just because of its details, the uh, overall aesthetic of the figure, the accuracy to the original character, the articulation, and, um, well, the accessories that come with it actually really help out in preserving the overall aesthetic of the figure, as you've seen previously. And that's the only problem with this figure, is that it's an exclusive. It's... 50, it's only limited to 50,000 copies, uh, 50,000 SP boxes, that is. And that's, and I really wish that it wasn't an exclusive, because this figure is so great, it's, it really deserves to be owned by more people. 
And if you actually get to find one of these or have a chance to pick the SP box up, I highly recommend you do because it is a really worthwhile purchase, especially if you're a fan of Saber and the game Fate Unlimited Codes is a great game. A fighting game created by Capcom, you know you can't go wrong with that. The and if you haven't had the chance to play this game, there is a PSP port of it coming out later this year in June, I believe. So definitely uh, try it out there. Uh, and so that's pretty much all I can say about this figure. And maybe next week, we'll be reviewing another exclusive Figma figure. So do stay tuned. And this is Actile saying, see you guys in the next episode.